take two. Last time I only got to five minutes. Here we go. Um, there, uh, I'm going to be bringing up a claim of the lack of validity in a religion. Uh, I'm an atheist, so of course I make these sort of arguments as well. The trouble is this one's based on not providing evidence or anything because it's avoiding the evidence or avoiding any kind of rational thought because it's in favor of some other religion that's equally creaky. Warning, most atheists think that they can disprove anything involving any religion. That's not my attitude, if anybody's curious. I have an objection to people seeing things in an incorrect way. Um, my opinion, I'm just going to give real quick. Uh, the Bible and most other old texts are, co are collections of cultural things like fables and such put together as a single work so you can carry it in your hand. That doesn't mean it's invalid. That just means that if you don't see it for what it really is, you're going to make it into something that it isn't and defiantly pervert its purpose. That's my opinion. Uh, also, next warning. The individuals who have posted this are attempting to discredit a belief system while propping up another one with equally creaky basis. But here we go. The claim in opposition to the New Testament version of reality, discussing events in the first century Christianity, and Jesus' teachings as a person, and that the entire Christian religion, church, calendar, Jesus, New Testament, Joseph, Mary, Paul, John, disciples, apostles, and maybe the Beatles, all are all characters that are fictional and created by... Now, most atheists will now hear something go off the rails and hear screeching noises as we try to put on the brakes. And most religious people should as well. An aristocratic Roman family trying to keep submissive control over keep slaves under control by keeping them submissive <clears throat> by giving them a belief system that's in antithesis of their current belief system that makes them warlike okay here we go this would require that the romans get hundreds of jewish people jews to abandon their their religion join a cult that just appeared recently without any explanation in the in the palestinian region or palestine region excuse me and this was proposed originally now this is as far back as I can trace it I, I'm sure it goes back further 1877 Bruno Bauer and then a hundred, over a hundred years later 1990 excuse me 1979 Al Abelard Ruchlin added in the a person named Arias Calpurnus Paizo this was then repeated and or modified by James Balitin Henny. I can't get the names right, and Jay Gallius. And then we hit the internet age. A Usenet troll who was known as Roman Paizo, because he wanted to have that as his name, made these assertions, uh, but it was really a person apparently named John Duran. I don't know if that's true. I'm not double-checking any of this. I'm just bringing you the story so far. And then Joseph Atwell based his assertions on what I call uh, blender scrabble and such. Uh, it's when you take a Bible or any other book and just scramble up the letters and then try to find words in it and then say, see, I proved my point, and then ignore everything that doesn't support your belief system. This is sometimes called babble, uh, excuse me, <laughs> Bible code, or uh, pareidolia scrabble, or uh, secret code, di code divination by destroying the source material. Um, this is an example of something you don't do if you want to find facts. Uh, no, Bible code is BS. I'm sorry, it really is BS. Uh, I'm not going to go back into that. We're just going to cover this really quick, though. Uh, and this was only applied to the English language translation of just four of the 40 second century canonical gospels. Since the English associations that were made, most of them were puns and uh, turns of phrase, didn't work in Greek. This would require a person to understand the language and the culture at the time the books were written. So instead, the person just looked up English language ones. This is very common on YouTube. If you're looking up an ancient script that existed before English was the common language, Old English is called Old English for a reason, if you won't look up the original language, you have no basis for your statements. And I rely on other scholarship when I do these reckonings of this stuff. So here we go. Um, and also, Judean elite at the time despised Greek because it wasn't their native tongue. So they wouldn't have used Greek to communicate anything. It would have been abhorrent to them. Most atheists will easily point out that the Gospels, Epistles, and all of the other parts of the Bible will contradict each other 
almost like they're arguing far too much to have been composed by any specific aim or purpose or even individuals or groups, sometimes within two sentences of, of each other. They also shine, show signs of later doctoring and, and retroconning so that they'll make some more sense, which is acknowledged by everybody who ever touched the blasted thing. There are even older versions that show the changes. And again, anybody who just uses English language versions absolutely just ignores this and just keeps trottling on down the road. Anyway, um, all of that makes it problematic to confirm or refute any hypothesis or theory if you don't use the original source material. This is like taking a hard drive that's been literally shot full of holes with, with a shotgun, retrieving the data and saying, see, it's exactly what, the, uh, what I thought it was. Well, it isn't. <laughs> These are reassembled and redone a lot. And there's other versions of the Bible that went past and then were revised when something was rediscovered. Um, again, if you want to look at the source material, you can, but nobody ever takes it to this channel, uh, challenge. Uh, only uh, academics in religion do that, and they are the least likely to agree with you if you have some religious axe to grind, because they know that you have no basis for it either. Again, this is like the, the equivalent to using English language translations to do your work is a lot like going on the internet and, and try to figure out, you know, anything, unless you go through a lot more work than just go find the original data. Anyway, uh, see also, I can't pronounce it, but I'm going to try it, Suetonius nine, uh, from 7 a 70 AD to 140 AD versus Antonius Pius, 86 AD to 161 AD not being the same person but this is an assertion by one or many of these people and it's not because the Kaisos back in the first or second century uh, AD made the historical record appear a different way to protect the conspiracy it's because there's no rationality for arranging this information in any way that makes this happen and I'm going to give up to here there is no evidence that the Paizo family descended from Herodian Hasmonean hierarchy that appointed the Jewish high priests, or even if that's a thing. No, there isn't. There's none of these people bring up any of the proof for it. They don't bring up any proof of any kind. Nor did they. Nor would they have the right to make a new religion based on Judaism. There was a Roman statesman, however, an orator, a patron of literature in the first century, known chiefly for his share in a conspiracy, a real one, in 65 A.D. against Nero to get him killed. He's not no noted or listed as as being an author of the New Testament Gospels of Matthew, Luke, and Mark, although this was posted on the 2006 version of Wikipedia once as vandalism by Alf Master, who falsely attributed to a 1911 Encyclopedia Britannica volume, 21, page ED 1A679, which I was able to dig up, which is in one of the links below. It doesn't list that. So the citation, please, equals someone lied about it. Now I'm going to bring up this last statement, which is the first. The claim in opposition to the New Testament as being about the first century, discussing it, and it being about Christianity and Jesus as a person, isn't refuted or supported by anything in this or anything I've said. But this is one of those things where someone went to the trouble of creating some sort of conspiracy theory, but deftly avoided disproving their own belief system. An atheist would simply bring up there's no reason to base any of these things uh, as being a reason to affect anyone else's life or make laws or feel holier than thou. These are a basis for having uh, some basis for your culture, your belief system, maybe guiding your life. That's fine. This is not a basis for picking up a Bible and saying, I have the right to kill you because it says here in the Bible I can kill you because you did something I didn't like when it says nothing of that in the, in the Bible. And if it does says it, it's not a basis of any kind. None of these statements or assertions by this, this particular group of people posting this idea, are any different than any other statement by any other group against any other group. And uh, atheism, my preferred way of looking at things, doesn't make these assertions either. Um, the presumption is here, if you're going to come up with a primacy of some sort of belief system or anything based on historical record, Retrieve the record. Don't trust an interpretation of it. This is something you see people type all the time. I will not believe history because it's revised. But you believe a revised version, not in the original language, definitely in contrary to the original writings, and ignoring some of them as being not quite good enough. At least the Song of Solomon ended up in there. 
Um, also, it should be pointed out, according to many people's assertions about it, Jesus isn't mentioned in the Old Testament. Why not? He's mentioned as the Messiah. Okay. Now, a couple of assertions that other people have made. The most likely scenario for Christianity to be based on Christ was to disempower people who felt empowered by saying there'll be a Messiah soon. I don't know. This is for everybody else to interpret. My assumption here is this sounds like a modern day version of a conspiracy theory, creating a whole cloth pile of BS that's in contradiction to recorded history, defying people to say the emperor has no clothes here, so that you can divide and concur, so you can get people to join your group because they don't double check things, or other people to be on the outside so you can say you're being put upon or being persecuted. Uh, in case anybody didn't know, that was the 1877 version of it. It's happened hundreds of times before then. It happened before the time of Christ. This is a standard pattern of behavior. And it's how you create alternate belief systems and histories and religions and belief systems. And also how you take power away from people by discrediting them with BS. And even I, an atheist, can say this is BS. But thanks to the person who decided to post the very vague version of this, I'm going to make sure this video is easily found by people trying to figure out what the heck anybody's typing about about that, if anybody's curious. The links below are more important than what I've said. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. And don't believe what I'm saying. Go look this up yourself. Bye.